Hey guys, welcome to the video. And here today we are doing the step one video in cleaning out your ROM sets tutorial. These are going to be three videos that are going to show you, well, exactly that, how to clean out and tidy up your ROM sets and get rid of a bunch of like duplicates or ROMs you don't want and things like that. And just do it, you know, in a way that's easy, but also uh, very detailed with control and all that good stuff. So I already did a video uh, that was an introduction where I talked about the three videos we'll be doing here. And this is the step one video, which you're watching right now. And then here is the uh, topics that we're going to cover in step two and step three. So maybe in case, you know, you feel like you're lost or something, you may want to watch that intro video is only like five to six minutes long. I'll put a link in the description. Also, while we're watching uh, these three videos, I just want you to keep in mind these key points as we go through these videos. Um, and I will put in the description a link to the RetroArch playlist. Uh, right now, you're only seeing a few videos, but believe me, this is going to expand to have a lot of videos with all things regarding RetroArch tutorials. Um, you know, as we go along. All right. So without further ado, let's go ahead and let's get started with the first thing in the step one video of cleaning out your ROM sets. All right, guys. And the first thing we're going to cover today is my suggestion on how you should be naming these uh, ROM folders. Although that doesn't really matter too, too much. But when you're dealing with RetroArch, especially if you're going to be dealing with multiple ROM sets and you want to keep things nice and organized, um, this is my recommendation and I have, let me go into my folder here. Of course, you'll have a folder called ROMs and that's how it should be. So that way, you know, of course, exactly what you're dealing with and where they are. Most people have it that way, but within that folder, then you have all the other subfolders that contain your no intro ROM sets. Uh, no intro ROM sets is what we're going to be dealing with in these tutorials. And the step one video, and the step two video, and the step three video, I cover that in the introduction video, which again, the link will be in the description. If you haven't watched it, I suggest you do. It's only five or six minutes long. And I cover in more detail what those no intro ROM sets specifically are. They're popular and it's what pretty much everybody uses um, for those ROMs from the 8-bit and 16-bit era. So in order to get the names like this, um, you can go right into RetroArch on your platform, wherever it's installed to. And RetroArch usually always installs into a folder called RetroArch, regardless of what platform it is. Once you go into that RetroArch folder, you may find the database folder right there. And that's what we're looking for. Sometimes it'll be within the system folder of that RetroArch folder. So you can go into the RetroArch folder, go into system, and you might find it there. But it shouldn't take you too long to find it. It's called database. And when you go into it, then you're going to go into the RDB folder that's in the database folder. And here is the um, the database and all the information on all the emulators. And this is where you get the names from. So I can just, for example, today we're going to be using uh, SNES, no intro ROM set. So right now I can like highlight this here if I wanted to. I can hit rename. When the name is highlighted, I'm just going to hit copy. OK, so it copies the name. Let's go here. And here is the folder I'm going to be working with today. For right now, I called it 1SNES, but I'm going to rename it. OK, and there we go. Now it's called Nintendo Dash Super Nintendo Entertainment System. When you're looking for things regarding a no intro ROM set, a lot of times those things are named like the no intro ROM set. So if I wanted to find uh, box art for the SNES no intro ROM set, I I would look for the SNES no intro ROM set box arts. And chances are that when I find them, they will all be in a zip file or in a folder called Nintendo dash Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Same thing with the cheat files and all of that good stuff. So it's just good to keep it all like nice and cohesive. Plus, when you are um, in RetroArch 
and let's say in this case we highlight our SNES column, it actually says Nintendo Dash <laughs> Nintendo Entertainment System. Now that name does not come from your folder, um, but it's good that your folder matches the way it is up here. Again, just so everything is nice and cohesive and smooth. And yeah, it, I think it's just a lot better, especially when you start dealing with multiple folders of like box arts and cheats and the ROMs themselves and all that good stuff, just to keep it nice and organized. The next thing is is that if you have um, if you have homebrews and um, and hacks and things like that I honestly suggest that you keep them separated for example later on in a bit I'm going to show you how I'm going to separate my SNES uh, Japan import ROMs and put them in a separate folder and these homebrews hacks and imports or whatever if you want you can actually display them um, as their own separate column. So for example, right here is my regular um, Nintendo, you know, SNES column. But if I go here to the end, I make kind of a hidden column right there that actually says SNES Super Mario World homebrews. And there's like a few hundred homebrews here of nothing but Super Mario World uh, homebrew games or hacked games and they display right here normally if I wanted them to show they would display in the regular SNES folder and then everything would be mixed up but you can have multiple columns so you can have one for SNES your regular SNES games SNES homebrews and hacks SNES um, imports and all that good stuff you can actually have multiple columns I will show you how to do that in upcoming uh, videos uh, in the retro arch tutorial so that's my suggestion is that you keep the hacks and the homebrews separated from your main um, uh, from your main ROM set folder of that particular system all right let's move on to some bulk deletion and cleaning out of some of the ROMs all right guys now as always you should whenever you're working and doing anything with a particular ROM set you should make a copy of that specific ROM set when you're working with it and just work with the copy that's what I've done here uh, this is a zip file containing a full no intro SNES ROM set I've extracted um, all of the files here to the folder I just named Super Nintendo I mean Nintendo Super Nintendo Entertainment System so they're all in here 3402 items I've actually listed that right here at the bottom of this like notes sheet and um, and yeah and all of the all of the initial ROMs are still in the zip in case I make a mistake it'll just be with the copy all right so what we're gonna do first is and I suggest going in this order is getting rid of samples prototypes betas things like that then get rid of the genre specific or title specific games that appear in bulk and then we'll attack the region in that order and of course guys as we go through all of this here this is individual specific you know it will differ uh, from person to person what you want to keep what you want to get rid of you don't have to do what I'm doing keep whatever it is that you want get rid of whatever you want again this is just how I do it so in these no intro ROM sets a lot of times you will find samples of games prototypes of games betas of the games demos of them but the full retail release of that game is already in the ROM set so for me I don't want to keep a sample of a game or the prototype of it or the beta if I already have the full game there. I don't need those. And sometimes there's a lot of them there, like in this particular ROM set. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up here. Um, I'm in my ROM set folder. I'm going to type sample. Okay, And you can see here there's 33 ROMs that are just sample ROMs and 99% of the time the full version of the game will already be there I'm just checking here to make sure that the word sample that's highlighted is at the end and that it's not actually part of the title of the game all of these are at the end good to go so we're gonna highlight them all and we're gonna delete them now I'm gonna do the same exact thing with Proto Gonna type PROTO. I'm gonna make sure that PROTO is not part of the name of the game. There's not like a game called Prototype X or something like that. As you can see, all of these uh, protos are at the end of the file name. They're not part of the actual name of the game. So we're good there. 
I'm going to control A and delete all of them. And we're going to do the same thing for beta. There's 235 betas here. Uh, again, I'm looking to make sure that uh, beta is not actually part of the name of the game, that all the highlights are at the end of the file name. And yep, I don't see any, so we're good. We're going to highlight all of these and we'll get rid of those. And then you're going to see here in a second when I type demo. Okay, there's only a few, but there's actually some um, games that have DEMO as part of the title, like Demon's Crest, Demolition Man. So I'm going to keep those. Now, some of them repeat here. See, these two are the exact same game, but the one is from Europe, the other one's from USA. So I'll just keep the USA ones for now. Since we're already here, we're not going to tackle duplicates right now. We're going to do that in the step in the step three video. Um, I don't need these either, um, like the Mode 7 demo or the DSP1 demo, don't need that. Uh, I'll keep the rest and let's go ahead and hit delete. Now what you can do is move on to the next thing. You can delete certain types of games that you don't want that appear a lot. So what I mean by that is, for example, I don't like soccer games. Now, sports games are notorious in these big no intro ROM sets. There's all kinds of sports games and a lot of people don't like sports or they just like some particular sports. So for me, I don't like soccer. I do like sports, but I don't like soccer. It's not really my thing. So I'm going to type soccer and look, there's 69 games. Now, no matter what language it's in, I'm never going to play a soccer game ever. So I'm going to go ahead and delete all those. Um, I don't like Mahjong, so let's type Mahjong, for example, and there's 50 Mahjong games. I'm never going to play those either. Not that there's anything wrong with them, but they're just not my thing. So if you don't like basketball, you can type basketball, type baseball, golf, tennis. Um, if you don't like like racing games, type race or racing. And anyway, you get the idea. Of course, this is not going to delete all of the types of that game um, because there are some that are still, you know, uh, similar or like games, but they don't have um, that specific word in the title. Like basketball, if you delete all the games that have basketball in the title, um, there's still things like NBA Jam or, you know, NBA Street or something like that, whatever, that are still basketball games that are, you know, um, not having basketball in the title. So, for example, here I got rid of a lot of soccer games, but if I was to type FIFA, Oh, there's only three. Okay, I expected there to be like 10, um, honestly, so we can get rid of FIFA. See, there's soccer games, but they don't have soccer in the title. So anyway, you get the idea. Again, at this point, I can't stress it enough. Do not go for the individual ROMs, the ones that have only like two or three of that particular ROM um, in your ROM set. We'll deal with that in step three. Go after the stuff that you know you're not going to play, that there's a lot of that particular type of game uh, in bulk in your ROM set. It'll just make it easier. So now let's go ahead and move on to the region. All right, and the last thing we're doing here is for this particular ROM set, I'm going to move over um, some ROMs that are from Japan. There's actually a lot of them here. Now I want this ROM set to be my main SNES ROM set. So I want pretty much all the ROMs to be all in English. I don't want any duplicates. I don't want any hacks or homebrews or anything like that. Those hacks, homebrews and imports and stuff, I already told you those are going to have their own separate folder and we can even bring them up as their own and separate columns in RetroArch. Because there's a lot of ones from Japan in here, I'm going to go ahead and type Japan. And you can see 1,529 pop up. I'm going to go ahead and highlight them. I already made a folder called SNES Japan right here. And you can see it's empty. So I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop these 1,529 files in there. Now, what we are not going to do here is we're not going to go after... Um, any of like the individual ROMs that are from other specific countries. So for example, ones from Germany, Spain, Italy, things like that. We're not going to take care of those right now. We're going to do that when we go through um, the next video, part two, using ROM Center um, and or in part three, when we use all dupe to go through our duplicates. And that's when we'll take care of them. So right now, there's also a lot of ROMs in here from Europe, 
Many of them are duplicates, but there are ROMs from Europe that were released there, but they don't have a USA counterpart and I'm interested in keeping them. So I'm not just gonna type Europe and get rid of them because then um, some of those, which most of them are all in English, they don't have a USA counterpart ROM. So I'm gonna leave the European ones and all the other ones alone, just the Japan one I moved. Now, once we're here in the Japan folder, the SNES Japan folder, I am gonna type USA because sometimes there's games like this X-Zone one that were released in Japan and USA and they're in English. So, um, you know, there's no other version of that game. There could be one, but we'll check later on. Here's Mario Paint and Super Metroid. Those are the only ones I'm interested in keeping uh, out of all of these that popped up. So I'm gonna move these three to my SNES folder here. All right, and if there's duplicates of those, three, then I'll just take care of them later on. That's pretty much it for this video, guys. Um, thanks for watching, as always. Sorry it was so long. In the next video, we'll be using ROM Center uh, to check for inappropriate, well, not inappropriate, inaccurately named ROMs, not inappropriately named ROMs, right? Um, incorrect name ROMs. And uh, we'll check for ROMs that might be missing. And we'll be using DAT files as well. I'll be explaining those and we'll be checking our ROM sets against uh, official DAT files to see how they look. That's pretty much it, guys. Again, thanks for watching. Subscribe and like if you haven't already. Take care and we'll see you in the next video.